and welcome to day seven of the Milk Thistle Vlogmas. My name is Kate and yeah, that's me. Thanks for joining me. Uh, today I'm going to be finishing off my Christmas cakes because yesterday kind of disappeared. There was kind of mid-afternoon and then suddenly it was like 7.30 at night and Christmas cakes take minimum three hours to cook and depending on the weather and you know how I've made the batch I've had them take up to four and a half hours so I wasn't sure um, how long they were going to take so I didn't want to put them in the oven at like eight o'clock at night and then possibly you know be staying up super late so this morning I'm just finishing editing the footage from yesterday I didn't um, yeah, didn't finish that off, and then I'll get to it, but I'll finish the cakes a little bit later today. I have a lot going on at the moment. There are puppies running around everywhere. I have yesterday's vlog about ready to publish. I have the rest of the things to finish the Christmas cake. I need to eat something at some point, and I got some mail. So this is from, can you see that? Oh my goodness, Alfred, are you okay? I don't know if you can hear him breathing. He does not sound well. So I am going to put my Christmas Eve cast on in this, this year, because I feel like while it is Christmas Eve, it's an all year bag. I just thought it was really beautiful and a really good size. So. I'm going to get going on these cakes. So the eggs and the bicarb soda are beat until, or whisked until they're light and fluffy. I'm going to stir that into the fruit mix and mix it in really well. Then I will add the nuts and last of all I'll add the flour. And the flour you just want to stir until it's combined. So the whole reason that you want to let your mix cool down before you... So what we made yesterday was the mix, and then what we made today, um, we're adding things to the cool down mixture. And this step here is why you want to let it cool down. Because I am currently mixing eggs into this sugary mix and if I was to have added the eggs when it was hot um, the eggs would have cooked and it would have gone gross <laughs> so it doesn't have to be completely cool if you were to refrigerate it you would find it very difficult to stir but you want it at about room temperature about the same temperature as your eggs this brown ickiness is what your batter looks like when it's ready to go in the tins so I've lined my three tins. You want to make sure that it comes up quite high out of the side just in case the cake rises. And also because you keep them for so long, you can fold the foil in afterwards um, to protect it. It's almost like a casing. So I've double lined the bottom and the sides and then the outer one is just coming up the highest. Um, yeah, they're all about the same height, but let's get pouring. So you want to put them in the middle rack of your oven, and they're going to go in at 110 degrees Celsius. The Fahrenheit conversion is in the Ravelry thing. Um, the link of which I'll leave below. So they're 110 for the first two hours and then for the next hour or two after that you turn the temperature down to 105. So that's all my Christmas cakes in the oven and now I just get to clean up the giant mess I made and wait a couple of hours for them to cook. See how 
how they are not burning at the outside, just cooking really gently. That's what you want. Okay, so I've already rotated them once just to make sure they're getting cooked evenly. And now we can change that to 105 and put her on for another hour. Awesome! I can't actually tell you how good my house smells right now. One of the cakes is out, the other two um, are taking a little longer. I think they need about another 10 minutes. But the smell is amazing.